A hidden world lies beneath the rolling hills of the lower Illinois River Valley. Once vibrant with the sights and sounds of prehistoric villagers performing the rituals of everyday life, this ancient landscape, stretching beyond the distant horizon, now lies dormant, silenced by the passage of time and the emergence of modern cities. Yet untold generations later, the merest fragments of these communities still possess the power to excite our collective imaginations. The simplest objects, a broken pottery vessel, an arrowhead, become extraordinary testaments to the intelligence, innovation, and sheer fortitude of America's first inhabitants. Captivated by the untold stories of 10,000 years, archaeologists from Northwestern University first arrived in the valley over 50 years ago. In response to the extraordinary archaeological richness of the region, an independent nonprofit institution was established in the small town of Campsville, Illinois, to serve as a research base to preserve the cultural resources of the valley. This research effectively changed the face of American archaeology. We are at the Illinois State Museum in Springfield, Illinois. The exhibit you see is what the Lower Illinois River Valley would have looked like 2,000 years ago in the Campsville region. Now this exhibit is based upon research that the center conducted. Now while the center has had amazing discoveries, what I'd like to do is show you some of the things we've found in the last 50 years. First off, I'd like to talk about the copper objects we've discovered in the valley. In particular, this first one is a miniature copper celt. It's about 2,000 years old. Uh, we find them in larger forms, probably not functional, but more ceremonial purposes. But we do find other copper tools, such as these awls, that were used. Uh, this one's rather large, might not have been functional, but the smaller ones we definitely know were used in stone tool manufacturing as a, as a, a tool to make those. Um, the copper itself is being traded in from the Lake Michigan area and it's not found locally. Uh, also at this time period we have ceramics, a variety of vessels being made uh, both for storage and for cooking. Uh, these aren't necessarily for those purposes but what we can do is get a view of their art artisanship and the craftsmanship involved. This particular vessel has a bird head and neck that goes around the vessel. On the smaller one Again, we have another bird depicted on the very edge and scrolls around the outside. Aside from ceramics, we have other clay objects. Uh, this clay figurine is also 2,000 years old. It uh, is not only uh, it gives you an idea of the artis artisanship uh, again, um, it was recovered in a soil sample and discovered back in the lab and otherwise might not have been seen in the field because of its small stature. Adjacent to that is a clay ear spool, uh, an ornament. Uh, it might have had shell attached to it. We also see these copper covered and they probably were made out of bone and wood as well. Um, again about the same time period. And then going further into, into time, <clears throat> around a thousand years ago we have our very own uh, river pearl necklace made from local shell, uh, a thousand years old. They were also using marine shell traded in from the Gulf and the Pacific and the Atlantic coasts uh, and used in ornamental fashion as well. And this goes back to thousands of years, not just a thousand and two thousand years ago. The Native peoples were doing that way before then. Um, moving through time again, still around the thousand year time period, we have a Mississippian pot. Uh, by this time period, the shape has changed, the pottery's thinner, and uh, this is a beaker, but most of the vessels from this time period are globular in shape, very rounded. And again, you have multiple purposes, storage, uh, cooking, and ceremonial pieces as well. Uh, this one it doesn't have any decoration. Uh, you can see the handles uh, on the sides, uh, but other pieces from that time period have various stylization. Uh, that, that indicates to archaeologists what time period that is from. Um, along at this time in Mississippian communities, not necessarily common to the area, uh, but we have direct evidence of trading um, with Mississippian peoples. This is a long-nosed god mask made out of shell. It is ornamental and you can again see the craftsmanship involved in order to make this. Uh, they are found on Mississippian sites. 
Sometimes they're copper covered, um, but we also find them on non-Mississippian sites such as in the Campsville region. And it's an indication to archaeologists that they're trading, have developed networks and are communicating between various populations from long distances. And uh, this, this little piece can be as, found as far west as northwest Iowa off the Missouri River. Um, as well, there's been a few others discovered in Illinois. Now, while we have an idea of the different stone technology, the ceramic technologies, and other tools and artifacts left behind people, what we don't have a clue on is the wood technology and the textiles because that stuff doesn't preserve. Now, I say that with this exception. Here we have a piece of textile or fabric from a thousand years ago discovered in the Campsville region. Um, in order for this to have preserved, a number of things probably occurred. One, the textile may or may not have been wet, and after that, it was put on a fire that was going out, so basically we had maybe some coals, enough heat to char the material, uh, but not burn it completely. Um, and then, this hearth feature that this had to have been thrown on uh, was uncovered uh, in clay, which prevent any further decomposition. The clay sealed the the hearth and uh, amazingly enough the, t the textile preserved. Now in most cases for an archaeologist to make this sort of discovery uh, it has to occur in an arid climate and uh, you typically wouldn't find this in the in the floodplain. Um, but a one-of-a-kind find for the center and an amazing piece uh, for us to study. Now this is just a sample of over 11 million objects the Center for American Archaeology has discovered in over 50 years worth of research. This research not only contributes to our educational program, our own visitor center, but places like the Illinois State Museum. It's an exciting time in archaeology with new technologies that we can look at past research and help preserve this knowledge, these sites, for future generations.